Prior to the 20th century, Americans had not considered their impacts on the environment. Nature seemed never-ending, and Manifest Destiny encouraged them to take over. As people moved across the country, creating cities and towns, they began to destroy ecosystems. Margaret Murie, who lived from 1902 to 2003, made it her goal to protect the remaining areas of land that still held thriving, intact ecosystems. Margaret, or Marty Murie, was a very important figure in U.S. history, and she helped to shape the U.S. today through her conservation efforts that helped draw attention, lead to change, and create affection towards nature. Marty Murie, nicknamed Grandmother of the Conservation Movement, was born in Seattle, Washington on August 18, 1902. When Marty was nine years old, she moved with her family to Alaska. Marty grew up spending a lot of time outdoors. She would become a pioneer to the environmental and conservation movements, but before doing so, she broke barriers in another field as well. In 1924, Marty became the first woman to graduate from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. After graduating, she married ecologist Olas Murray. This was the beginning of Marty's efforts in the environmental and conservation movements. Marty began conservation work when her husband, Olas, was assigned to study the elk population in Wyoming. Marty accompanied him, and they worked together, traveling the wilderness by dog sled and studying the pressures on the elk populations. They had a son, Martin, who traveled with them, and then eventually another son and a daughter, Donald and Joanne. Together, Marty and Olas began to work to draw attention to their idea of preserving entire ecosystems, an idea which was quite radical at that time period. Together, they worked to protect land from private corporations, such as their role in protecting Jackson Hole National Monument in Wyoming, where they recommended pieces of legislature to ensure the preservation of the land. In 1956, Marty and Olas began to campaign for the government to protect an area of land in Alaska, which is now the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Marty and Olas eventually found success when, in 1960, President Dwight D. Eisenhower established an over 8 million acre National Wildlife Refuge to maintain and protect life in that area. In 1963, Olas died, but Marty continued work without her husband. She worked with passion, slowly drawing more attention to her cause over time. Marty began to draw attention on a national level as she traveled the country and gave speeches. This was seen on all fronts, from political cartoons making fun of private corporations to the government regulating how corporations could treat the environment to winning national attention in the form of awards. Marty won the Audubon Medal in 1980 and continued to win awards after that, receiving the John Muir Award in 1983 and the Presidential Award of Freedom in 1998. Marty's careful observations and research had drawn the country's attention to environmental issues. This was important because Marty showed the world a big problem and she encouraged people to make changes and to draw attention, which carries over directly to today's protests over climate change and oil drilling. Marty Murray's studies and work led to changes in how the country viewed the environment and how they treated it. When Murray began her campaign for conserving ecosystems, she and park rangers were not always welcome. In one clip, Marty recounts an instance where townspeople were complaining about the arrival of the rangers, saying, Oh, there's a, there's a bunch of those park service people. And why do they bother to come down here today? What, what do they want to bother with us for? That's the, the way the, the sentiment was in, the, in this valley in, in, in that time in, in history. Despite this type of attitude, which was common among many during that time period, Marty never gave up, and she kept campaigning for change in how the U.S. treated and viewed the environment. And over time, an increasing number of people began to support her radical ideas. In 1977, Marty testified in front of Congress and convincingly argued in favor of the passage of the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, saying famously, The oil will be found and it will go. Whatever minerals are left will go too. Timber will be depleted. What then will be left for the future besides the fisheries? Surely the great United States of America is not so poor that we cannot afford these places, not so rich that we can do without them. The act was signed into law by President Carter in 1980 and doubled the size of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Murray became known as the grandmother of the conservation movement, and she fought harder for the protection of Alaskan land than any other person at that time. Marty also traveled around the world to Tanzania and New Zealand, studying how different environmental pressures impacted different areas of the world. Marty convinced many people of the necessity to protect and conserve the environment, and her goals have been forever immortalized with the creation of Arctic Dance, a documentary about her life. Her actions to make change are still affecting us today. 
the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is still in place and many people are working to maintain its protection and are advocating for change. Marty also created an affection for nature that was and is reflected in many people. The University of Alaska Fairbanks, where she graduated college, honored Marty and her accomplishments with the completion of the Murray Building in 2013, 10 years after her death. The building serves as a central home for their Department of Biology and Wildlife. Marty's home, the Murray Ranch, was also honored when it was declared a National Historic District in 1997. Murray started off a chain of people trying to make changes and trying to protect the environment. Today, climate change is a topic that many people are familiar with. There are also many activists fighting to protect nature, and without Margaret Murray inspiring people and pioneering the conservation and environmental movements by drawing attention and leading to change, we might not have the knowledge of the environment and the respect to its importance that we do today.